So as we wrap up this module, I'd like to show you one more way to do the square tracer that uh, is something that you wouldn't have probably looked at before. But I think now is a good time to introduce this last concept. So I'd like to actually make a new, another version of this that we're going to call square tracer 3. And it's built on top of my square tracer 1. So I'm in square tracer 1 right now. I'm going to do a save as a copy. And it takes a little second for it to copy out and it reloads here. And then I'm going to rename this, instead of Square Tracer 1 copy, I'm going to rename this Square Tracer 3. Right, so I'll make sure that I save this out. But this is built on top of the Square Tracer number 1. If you remember Square Tracer number 1 the way it was originally, uh, this is the one, the one that uses, uh, uses relative motion. So we move, turn, move, turn, move, turn. And notice that if you look at this carefully here, I've got these three blocks of code right here repeated several times. I mean, what is a square? Right? A square is a side and a 90 degree angle. Right? And so, I mean, if you look at this, these three blocks of code are here once, then here's two, then here's three, and then here's four. And, and I've got that same four block of, those same three blocks of code four times. Well, those of you who know a little bit about computer programming know that we, you know, computer scientists are lazy, right? We don't want to say the same thing over and over again. And so what we might want to do is be able to tell the computer, look, I want you to do this four times. And so instead of actually physically saying it four times, we want to be able to tell the computer, I want to take this and say it four times. And that's part of the control of this program. So if we go into control, You'll see that the next block down, we've already looked at weight, but the next block down is a repeat block. And the repeat block allows me to say some, to do something multiple times. Well, in this case, I want to make a square, so I want to repeat four times, and then I want four times to do this block of code. And so I don't want to add this to the end of this. What I want to do is put it inside of this block. And so you'll notice carefully here that as I move this around, I can put it after the block, or I can put it inside of the block. And so here is a repeat four times. When I let it go, the, the block expands and grabs this, this code and wraps around it. Uh, I often talk about this with my students as, you know, this is the mouth of that block. And so what this code says to the computer is four times I want you to move, turn, wait, and then when you get to the bottom, go back to the top and do this four times. Right? The fourth time when you get to the bottom, then move on, keep going. And so this is a really easy way to not have to say things over and over and over again. And so I can just say four times, repeat. Right? And what's really nice about this is, well, I mean, a square wasn't too hard to make over and over and over again. But suppose that you wanted to make something that looked something like uh, a circle, right? I mean, what is a circle? A circle is, is really making a very small movement. And then I, I'm going to make just a half circle now. Uh, let's turn one degree, right? And let's do that uh, 180 times, right? And so I can now have the cat move. OK, this wait half a second is killing me right now because I'm going to wait a total of a half a second 180 times. So I'm going to pull that out of there. You notice what's kind of cool about Scratch is that while the code is running, it'll allow you to make that change. And there it goes. And so there I made a, a half circle. Uh, and if I wanted to make a full circle, I could change this to 360 degrees. And now, if, if I were to have to do this over and over and over again, right? Square Tracer 1 made me say move, turn, and then copy that code four times. Not so bad with four times. That would stink if I had to say move, turn, move, turn 360 unique times in here. I'd have this giant long program. No, I just want to say, hey, do these two blocks of code 360 times. And so that use of the repeat allows us to uh, not have to say things over and over and over again. We'll come back and talk more about that idea as we go on in future units. But that little idea may help you with your programming assignment that you're going to complete at the end of this module. So in this lesson, we looked at the repeat block, one of the control features in Scratch, and how we can use the repeat block to remove some of the duplicate code that we're using in a program. And what I'd like you to think about before you move on to the next lesson is places where you might use a repeat block to help you and your students write better code in the kinds of programs you might write with your students.